Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video is going to be all about operator overloading. This is gonna be the concept behind it. And in the upcoming video, we're gonna go through some examples. So first you need to check out our sponsor Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So what is operator overloading? Well, if you think of an operator, let's just do a quick five second refresher. Five plus five. That plus is an example of an operator, and it does stuff with operands. The fives are examples of operands. Now, this makes sense in the context of integers, but what if we had a custom type? Let's say we defined a point type which contained an X and a Y. So basically a coordinate, or coordinates, or would it be a coordinate or a coordinates? I think, I think coordinates because it has an X and a Y. Anywho, that's not the point. We defined a point which has an X member and a Y member. Now, let's say we created two of them, point A and point B, and we do A plus B. Well, does this make sense? Maybe to us, because we might think, oh, just add the X's together and add the Y's together. Or maybe, maybe it means something else. Well, that's the thing. With operator overloading, we can define what the plus sign means in the context of our custom types. So it's a really, really powerful way to basically change the way we write code. So rather than always using functions and function calls, we can use operators and make things a lot more easier to understand and cleaner for us. The computer is not going to understand what to do by default, which is why we overload the operators and tell it specifically step by step how to do these operators on these operands. Now when you do this, you define it inside of the class, so inside of the point class. And you can kind of think of an operator sort of like a function. So because this would be defined inside of the point class, you can think of the operand on the left being the point, the home point that we're gonna start with. And then you can think of adding B to A. <laughs> and that's kind of weird, but just trust me here for a minute, it'll make sense in a second. So we're taking B and we're adding it to A. And this is defined within the point class so we can access the members of A directly. So how do we actually overload an operator? It's very similar to a function. Think of what this is doing. It's taking B as an argument, it's adding it to A, and it's going to return a new point where the X and Ys have been added together. So it's gonna look like this. We're going to say operator, and then we put what operator we're overloading, the plus sign, and we take one point as an argument. You can call it whatever, we'll just call it pose for position. Such a stupid variable name. <laughs> and this is going to return a point. So here is the signature for defining an operator overload for the plus operator. Then inside the body, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to create a new point, and now all we do is define the X and Y and return it. So point dot X is going to be assigned the value X plus pose X. <laughs> now this can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of X's here. Point dot X refers to the result, what we're trying to get once we add these together. The X here refers to A. Now pose dot X is coming in as an argument, which is B. Then we do it again for Y, and we say Y plus pose dot Y. And then once we're done, we got that point made, we just return it. And bada boom, bada bang, we just overloaded this operator. Pretty awesome, I know. And I can't spell, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be an E there. Pff, I don't know. <laughs> so in summary, when you use operators, you can just think of them as a different way of writing functions. In the next video, we're gonna get hands on with some operator overloading. I'm pretty stoked, you'll definitely wanna check that out. And yeah, let's do it. All right, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.